Hello detectives, welcome to page 11. Sometimes a good detective has to get on all fours and really look closely for clues. Well, let's see. We have an A, a B, I C, and a C sharp. And then we go one note higher to hmm, A, B, C sharp. By extrapolation, I think it might be a D. And you are right if you guess that. We are adding fourth finger to your repertoire. So if you think about what we're doing today in page 11 and page 12, the, uh, what we did before this is like if you were uh, building a house, so it's like digging the footings and pouring the cement into the footings. Now we're pouring the cement wall for the foundation. We haven't poured the floor in the house yet, but the page 11 and page 12 are definitely your foundation walls. If you get these pages, you will have first position down and you will be able to play in three different keys that we're going to learn on the next page. So if you will spend the time doing the three things that we talked about and then adding one more. So the three things are the name of the note, where it's at in your music on the staff, where it's at on your cello, and how long that bow is, like a note is, whether it's a whole note, half note, or quarter note at this point. So um, the first few measures of on all fours, we have quarter notes all the way along, then whole notes. So we know we're going to do a fourth of a bow back and forth on these, not a hard rhythm. Then we're going to do two long notes while, while we transition from A to the D string. The other thing I want to point out to you is that all of our open strings are on a line. So see how all the open strings have a line through the middle of the note? Um, and then if we go up from a line, there's always a space next to it. Then there's a line through C sharp, then a space where the note is on top of a line. And these lines above the staff are called ledger lines. There's ledger lines above the staff and below the staff. So we have five lines and then if it goes above that, it, they always write in these, the ledger lines and there's still a line or a space. Now these are important because we're going to learn a theory concept today that's super important. So let's play a little bit of on all fours. Uh, we'll start on that A string. This will, this, you've already done the fourth finger on open, on, on route 404 in the four spaces in line. But now we're going to do it in, a, in conjunction with A, B, put down two and three, then put down four. So your fingers are down and then you're going to learn to move this fourth finger by itself. So uh, measure one, one, and we'll do that first line actually. One, two, three, play. <laughs> Hey, hey, G, G, hey, me. 
Now open C. say the notes out loud, make sure you, the next day you can do it without any pauses. If you pause or hesitate or make a mistake, um, then you need to go back and play it again. I'm laughing because I don't know what I, I was distracted by something I said the wrong note. Okay, detectives, let's take a closer look at the next one. So the next one says natural half steps. Well, what is a half step? Let's read. Half steps are notes that are the next nearest note, or one finger apart. There are two places where music has natural half steps, between B and C and E and F. Hmm, well, what does that mean? Well, let's look at the piano keyboard for a minute. This will help us. So on the piano keyboard, there, you see black keys and you see white keys. The white keys on the piano are your A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They don't have, um, at this point, they don't have sharp or flat attached to them. But we have a space so that every other note is either white, black, white, black, white, black. Well, there's a couple of places on the keyboard where it's white together, white keys together. Well, those are the natural half steps on the piano because every other place on the piano has a note in between. So here's a natural half step. This is also a natural half step. And guess what? They're the same place and uh, same note names as the cello. So we have between B and C is a natural half step and between E and F, just like the piano, there's a natural half step. Well, where they are on the on the cello that we are going to learn today, if you look at your music, um, we have B on the G string, third finger, and then C on the G string, fourth finger. That's two fingers right together, third finger and fourth finger. There's no finger in between, so that's a half step. On the C string, we have third finger E, fourth finger F. That is also a half step because there's no finger in between them. So we have B to C, E to F, and then they go backwards down to the open C. So play this along, and then we're going to learn the next one, which is hmm, a whole step. Well, what's a whole step? Let's read. Whole steps have a note between them. Open string to first finger is a whole step. First finger to third finger is a whole step. Fourth finger to the next higher open string is a whole step to what? Natural whole steps occur between C, D, E, D, E, G, A, A, B. Oh, and then it says wait for what comes next. Well, as a detective, I'm super excited to find out what comes next. But for today, we're going to stay on these. So a whole step is what they're telling me. There's a note in between the fingers. So open C to first finger. Hmm. Well, where's the note between open C and first finger? I don't remember there being a note there. Well, detectives, as you explore this cello case and start cracking it even more, you're going to find out that there's a thing called extensions. And we take this first finger and we move it back a half step, or we can take fourth finger and move third, second, third, and fourth finger up a half step. Those are called extensions. So there is a note back here, we just haven't learned it. So open one has a note in between, so that's a whole step. 1 to 3, D to E, 
is a natural whole step because we have second finger in between them. We already know that three to four is a half step, but four to open string, so fourth finger, whoops, I'm not in the right. Four to open is a whole step because there is an extension here. We haven't learned those, but you're, that's coming in the next book. So four to open is a whole step. Open to one is a whole step. One to three is a whole step. Four to open is a whole step. So let's do the whole step, natural whole steps. Starts on C. We're going to go C, then D, D, then back to C, whole step, then D to E, whole step, then four to open. First finger to B is a whole step, and C to open, then D to E, then G to A, A to B, then we're just going to play G octaves. Page 11 is very important for you to get really learned deep in your memory. The idea is that our brain learns one thing at a time very well, but if you've learned something, it can pile onto itself. So a good example, if I say the word dog, you may know a lot of dogs. You may have a lot of visuals of what that means. That could be different breeds, it could be different sizes of dogs, it could be that you're scared of dogs, it could be that you love them. Um, you also know how to spell that word and say it, and you know what that is. And a whole bunch of stuff comes into your brain all at one time. Music, you learn one, if you can learn one concept at a time, that learning piles onto itself. And then when you see something like, whole step or half step, immediately you know what that means. Light goes on, and, oh yeah, whole step, half step, I can play that, I know where it is. So take some time with this page, even though it's pattern oriented, it seems easy. These are concepts that build on themselves that you'll be glad that you know for the future.